Introducing Pat Head Summit is her sponsor and 1976 Olympic coach, Billy Moore. Thank you. When uh, asked to introduce Pat, I know most of you think that, think that sounds like something very simple. But it's one of the more difficult tasks, because how do you briefly introduce someone with those credentials? Uh, she, with her credentials, she stands in a class alone. Yet for me, it is not the gold medal. It is not the championships. It is not the number of wins that separates her from her peers. It is the way she has conducted herself. That is what is the most impressive aspect. I had a chance to coach her and learn firsthand her commitment to hard work, to making her teammates better, and for her passion for the game of basketball. These same characteristics are as apparent as I've had the opportunity to watch her develop her coaching style. The coaching profession has forever changed and the bar raised to a higher standard because of Pat's willingness to share and give her time to other coaches. If you ask Pat about her success, she would say she has been blessed. Yet we are the ones blessed because she chose to share her talents with all of us in the basketball family. I am proud and honored to welcome my dear friend, Pat Summit, into the Hall of Fame. Pat Head Summit, proud daughter of the state of Tennessee, how proud you have made that great university and all of us who've had the privilege of watching you become simply one of the best coaches ever. And so by the vote of the Honors Committee, and by the power invested in the Board of Trustees, what a privilege to induct you as a coach into the Naismith Basketball Hall of Fame. Congratulations. Come on, Pat. One thing about being in it this long, do you see all those wonderful hairdos I had to live through? <laughs> Life is great. Tonight, I have to tell you that I oftentimes tell our players, it's never as great as it seems, nor is it as bad. This is pretty awesome. And I am truly honored to be here and to be inducted into this great hall. Billy, you've been a mentor and you've been a friend, and I truly appreciate the impact you've had on my career as a basketball coach, and I am a better coach and a better person because of you. And Tyler, I think you're the most handsome guy here, you know that. Tyler always tells me, he says, Mom, I am your good luck charm. And I said, yes, you are, and you're my greatest victory. And I also tell him that uh, the players give him an awful lot of credit for giving me more patience and helping me become a more understanding and compassionate teacher and coach. And he reminded me at the end of that today that he's helped me recruit, too. As a matter of fact, Ms. Hoseclaw, Shamiqua's grandmother's here. He said when he was four years old and you and Shamiqua came to our house, he went running out and he said, Hi, Shamiqua, I'm Tyler. So, Tyler, thanks for all your help in my career. Certainly, I want to thank the Honors Committee and the Hall of Fame for a tremendous honor. And I want to congratulate the class of 2000 which I've really enjoyed the time I've spent with four wonderful contributors and, and players and people that really, truly love this game. It's just been a thrill to spend the last couple of days with them. And I appreciate the impact that they've had. Certainly, when I think about my life, Billy's right, I've, I've truly been blessed. And I, I think God's plan for Pat was 
Somehow I, I needed to make a difference for young women and my avenue, hopefully, was the right avenue and that's through the game of basketball. And I do love it and it's loved me back. And in that whole process, I, I've had to reflect on tonight and what this means and my journey started with my family. And I was very fortunate to have great support at home. And having three older brothers and being the fourth and the first girl in the family, I didn't know how my mom and dad would take to me wanting to be just like them and play basketball. The good news was there was three of them and they needed me. They needed me to play two on two. And they made a great impact. And tonight, two of my brothers are here, Tommy and Kenneth and my nephew Derek, Tommy's oldest son, and my sister Linda. And I, tried to get Linda to come to this Hall of Fame induction, and she goes, I don't know if I can do it. You know, I've got two daughters. They're both playing basketball. i got to get them to practice. I said, Linda, this is a pretty special deal. And she goes, I know, but I just don't know if I can do it. Well, when she talked to our pastor of our Methodist church, Brother Steve, Brother Steve said, Linda, you have to go. For your sister, this is the ultimate in her profession. He said, if maybe I can put it in perspective for you here and tell you, as a preacher, it'd be like me being an angel in heaven. She goes, I'm going. <laughs> so tonight, I'm glad to have my family here and, and also uh, tell you, I feel like I'm an angel in the basketball heaven. This is really, really special. And then my mom and dad are not here. Physically, they couldn't make the the trip here tonight, but uh, I know they'll be watching. And as coaches, sometimes a few of us are superstitious. Not many, I'm sure. But the number 13, I've had a real battle with it. And it's just bugged me. And then I said, I'm going to overcome it. So I named one of our defenses number 13. And it was pretty good to us. So I thought, maybe I'm getting over this. And today's October the 13th. And my mom and dad just happened to share the same birthday. And their birthday is today, October 13th. So it's a great day for our family. But I have to thank them because um, my parents decided, Richard and Hazel, that they would move the entire family. We finally got out of a log house, built a new home, and dad decides we're gonna move the entire family so my daughter can continue her basketball career in high school, and it's the only way I could have. So we moved across the county line, and while I'm not sure my dad knew what he was doing, if he was here tonight, he'd tell you he had all that worked out, and it would, it would uh, wind up this way, but I, I really appreciate having that kind of support. And then in life, if you have opportunities come your way, you know, a lot of it is about timing, and the University of Tennessee, and I have some of the administration here tonight, and Joan Cronin, our athletic director, and the administration there hired me as a graduate student to be the assistant coach. Timing was such that the head coach decided she would take a sabbatical, and she takes a sabbatical, and I was named head coach. So at 22, with four players, 21, I'm trying to figure out how to coach. One of the reporters asked me, you know, you get great questions. And one of the reporters asked me, well, 27 years ago when you started coaching, did you think about being inducted into the Hall of Fame? I said, no, I was trying to figure out strategically where I could put all the flyers up on campus to attract the most talent to our tryouts. We didn't have recruiting and scholarships. I was trying to find someone in my graduate class that would actually come and volunteer their time as an assistant coach. And I had to learn how to tape ankles. I have players today tell me they're still scarred from all the taping that I did early on. You know, and, and I tried to figure out how I was going to be able to afford to live on $250 a month. That's what they paid me. And I'm sure some people thought I was overpaid then. But it was an opportunity, and I just uh, I really want to thank the University of Tennessee for that. And then... Um, I had another opportunity to coach, and that was at age 27. I got to coach USA basketball. And it was a year after uh, I competed in the Olympics that, that I was asked to do that. And, you know, it's people like Dave Gavitt, 
and Bill Wall and Tom Jernstead, George Killian, Bryce Durbin, a lot of those individuals, along with Billy Moore and then the support of USA Basketball, that I started a career in the game internationally. And I just uh, appreciate that opportunity. And look at what's happened to women's basketball at the collegiate level and internationally. And it's just been awesome to be a small part of what's happened. And date little girls, all you guys that have those little girls, they can grow up and have a dream. And they can dream to get a scholarship and it can become a reality. And they can dream to be a representative of their country on the basketball court and it can happen. And I just appreciate being a part of that whole process. And tonight, uh, Nell Fortner, our Olympic coach, who did an awesome job in Sydney. I was fortunate enough to be there. I had two players on that team. Let's give Nell a hand for that <laughs> terrific performance. We tell our kids, hang with great people. Well, you win in life with people. And as I think about all the people who've influenced my life and certainly my family, but I think about the staff, the staff that's helped to make our program not just a team, but a great program. And tonight I have three people with me that uh, made a big difference. You know, we call time out. Those of you who have watched us, you know, we, uh, we all huddle and we talk. I'm fortunate enough to have over 80 years of coaching experience on the bench. Why not talk? And uh, I'm fortunate enough, and I guess you know after I had to tape angles and do all that stuff that I've learned how to delegate, and you three have done an awful lot. Mickey DeMoss and Holly Warlick and Al Brown, I just thank you for being there for me and making a difference for me. And then certainly to have the support right at home, RB. I know it's not been easy to be married to me for 20 years. Bless your heart. You've done, you've done a great job of supporting women. You have a very strong mother that I think has been a great role model for you and May Summit and Ross. Uh, it means a lot that y'all made this trip and that you've shared in my career and really appreciate, RB, you and your family and, and what you've given to, to this career at Tennessee. To the players, oh, when you got talent, coaches, it gets better, doesn't it? And I, I just, I've had some great players. Uh, I can't list them all, but they have just been tremendous in number. It's been almost 120 players. And when you look at that and you think about over 19 of them were all Americans, there's never been an Olympic team without a Tennessee player on it. So we've had a lot of talent and we're proud. But the thing I think about when I think about players and I think about accepting this award tonight, and I know the other recipients feel the same, it's, it's about relationships. You know, those uh, national championships and those big wins are great. If you don't have someone to share it with, if you don't have your family and your staff and your administration and your friends, you know, what do you have? And so it's really special to have all those great players. And I love getting phone calls, even if it's in the middle of the night, to know that they feel like that they can continue to call and have a great relationship. To the fans, you've been awesome. We couldn't do it without the fans. We couldn't do it without the media support. Debbie Jennings and media relations, you've been there about as long as I have, and you've really spread the word for women's basketball, and I appreciate that. And then last of all, to, um, to a lot of great friends. I have wonderful friends. And it means a lot that you made this trip. Uh, to be here, right back here, we have some people that uh, traveled the ways and have a college teammate, my academic friend from college, and friends here from Knoxville that um, without your support, this journey might not have been possible, but it sure wouldn't have been as much fun for sure, I know that. And then last of all, I just, um, I just like to say that I've always felt a tremendous responsibility as a coach and as a teacher to give to this game. I could never give to this game what this game is given or meant to me. It has changed my life for the better. It has allowed me to then share everything I've learned from my family and the value system through the game of basketball. 
I've always wanted to promote it, and I've always wanted to give back to it. But I certainly understand if it had not been for the foundation of the men's game, the women's game would not be what it is today. And I thank you for the examples you set at all levels. And then I accept this award on behalf of all the people, all the wonderful people and friends and the media and the fans and the players and the coaches and the contributors that truly embrace this game. And tonight I accept this on behalf of our great game. Thank you.